One of my favorite laser cut projects to design and make are table lamps. It takes a bit of planning to create a product where every piece comes together like a three-dimensional puzzle. But once you get the hang of it, creating a lamp like this is simple. Today, I'll show you my process of making this custom lamp with a laser cutter. To design this project, I use a program called Rhinoceros and start by drawing a circle with a 3 inch radius. This is the beginning of the bottom frame of the lamp and it gives us enough space to fit our hand into the lamp to install a light bulb. Using the circle command again, I draw a smaller circle at the center of the first one and give it a radius between 0.75 inches and 0.8 inches. Next, I draw a line from the center of the circles and make it really long. I use the move command to shift the line until it's crossing both the top and bottom of the circle. This is the beginning of the cutouts around the bottom frame, which will let some of the warmer air flow away from the light bulb. Using the offset command to both sides, I create two lines spaced 3 quarters of an inch away from the center one and delete the original line. With the offset command, I create additional circles spaced 3 quarters of an inch from the previous one. Now we select two lines, use the mirror command, snap to the center of the circle, and mirror the lines at a 45 degree angle to copy them perpendicular to the original ones. To finish the rough design of the frame, we select all the lines that we drew, use the trim command, and clean up all the excess lines until we're left with the circular frame, center cutout, and small voids at the four quadrants of the circle. Next, we use the polyline command to draw a rectangular cutout that'll go around the entire perimeter of the bottom frame. I decided to rotate it 30 degrees so that the vertical panels gets installed at an angle around the entire frame. After setting the angled rectangle in place at the perimeter, I use the trim command to clean up the line passing the perimeter of the circle. Using the polar array command, I create 32 copies of the angled cutout around the entire frame. To create the upper frame, we can use this one as a guide by creating a circle that's 3 quarters of an inch smaller than the original one and copying it over along with the outer lines of the bottom frame. We'll adjust the design of this upper frame as we design the panels of this project. I won't get into the design of the panel since my previous lamp projects covered this in detail, but if you want to learn how to design a project like this and go at a step-by-step -step pace with me, check out the full-length tutorial on Skillshare linked in the description of this video. Once the panels were designed, I created a 3D model by extruding all of the shapes and using the rotate command to turn the pieces so that they were vertical. Using the move and rotate commands, I shifted every piece into place. I realized that the panel design changed the upper frame dimension. To quickly fix the design of the frame, I created a circle cutout with a larger radius, extruded it, and moved it into place in the 3D model. Then, I used the boolean function to extract the panels from the frame. I go step by step through this process in the full length tutorial. Once the frame was fixed, this is how the 3D model turned out. When the design was complete, I gathered my materials including mahogany plywood, protective paper masking tape, plastic card, utility knife, super glue, light fixture kit, and LED light bulb. I apply the paper masking tape to the plywood to protect it from scorches and burns from the laser. I place the plywood into my Glowforge laser cutter and start the process of cutting and engraving. While I was laser cutting this project, I thought of two ways I could have made this project more efficient with materials and time. The first is to reduce the height of the panel so I could fit more onto one sheet of plywood within my laser cutter. The second is that I could buy a laser cutter with a larger maximum cutting area. From beginning to end, it took roughly 15 minutes to laser cut every piece of this table lamp. While I was waiting, I just watched the laser in action because it gives me a similar feeling to sitting and staring at a campfire. Seeing the laser cutting something we just designed as precisely as this makes it seem like magic. If you're interested in purchasing a Glowforge laser cutter for yourself, I'll share a link in the description of this video that'll save you up to $500 off of a Glowforge Pro. When the pieces were cut, I took them out of my Glowforge and placed them on my work table. I removed the paper masking tape from the plywood to reveal the beautiful mahogany plywood. Then, I use a lint-free cloth and rubbing oil to finish the surfaces of the plywood. This brings out the grains of the wood, darkens it, and makes it shine while also protecting the surface.
Next, I apply MaxiCure super glue to the tabs at the slots of the perimeters of the frames, align the slots of one panel with each frame, and push it into place. Repeating this process gets easier as more panels are installed. Instead of applying super glue only in the next slot, I apply it in a handful of them, bring over the panels, and install each one. They click into place when they're aligned and properly installed. Once the glue dries, I turn the table lamp upright, bring over the lamp fixture base, insert it through the center cutout of the bottom frame, and twist the cap to lock it into place. To finish up this project, we install the light bulb and turn it on. Now, this custom table lamp is complete. What I love most about this project is how the repetitive panels look a little different based on the angle of the light, the location we're viewing it from, and the shadows that are cast on its surface. If you're interested in going step by step with me and learning how to create this lamp as well as other ones, make sure you check out my Skillshare video linked in the description. Remember to check out this playlist of my other wood crafts and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.